I, I guess what I'm going to present is a, a third hat that I currently hold, uh, which is uh, coordinating a new initiative that the government is driving nationally. So yet another national initiative focused on AI. So I'll give you some elements uh, of what some of the objectives are with regard to this institute. I think that's part of my objective for today. And I fully agree, you know, in terms of uh, nationally, uh, the ability to coordinate these different initiatives uh, is quite important because uh, there are a lot of parallels, uh, multiple uh, objectives that seem duplicated amongst some of these uh, sort of uh, initiatives. And it's quite important that, uh, you know, there needs to be some level of uh, coordination, but that's a discussion for maybe another day. When I was preparing this presentation, you know, you get filled with multiple thoughts. You know, you, your head gets filled with this fear that probably fills a lot of our minds and thoughts. You know, what are the pitfalls in AI? So I, I, I thought, let me let me touch on a bit of that uh, before I get into explaining what the AI Institute actually is about. Because a lot of what we do, and okay, I'm in the university space as well, uh, so there's a lot of concern, you know, in terms of uh, originality, as the previous speaker spoke about, how do we infuse that in the uh, type of training? Uh, it's, it's areas that we are uh, sort of uh, uh, obliged to relook at how we train, for example. Uh, so there's a lot of elements that stem out of the fears that are attached with AI. And if you would just allow me for a few minutes uh, just to highlight some of these. Uh, so we all know the impact of AI, so I thought I'll just start with that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work and research work in terms of collecting data, highlighting what are the major opportunities and uh, as a technology, as a general purpose uh, tool, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. We can see it, the impact it has, a potential impact it has in growing economies and the potential to boost global GDPs. I think fundamentally, if you look from the technology point of view and the capability of the tech and where it's going, there's a lot of opportunity. The challenge we have uh, in maybe the global south to a great extent or where we are positioned and in many developing countries is to find a suitable strategy that can take advantage of this. And we have a lot of challenges in, you know, in our society, uh, which is one of the challenges we face with regard to some of these technologies, but the potential is out there. So some of the fakes, I mean, some of the challenges, we, we've heard a lot of it. I won't spend a lot of time of it on this, but... Uh, in various sectors, if you take every sector of society, the potential for deepfakes, pseudo images, misinformation is quite large. Uh, we could see that uh, out of many examples, you know, in the entertainment industry, in governments, uh, even in you know, in uh, various sectors of manufacturing and industry, there's a lot of challenges that one will uh, uh, sort of face due to synthetic information that gets generated and there needs to be a, a strategy to manage that. And even from our space, I, I, I sit in a faculty of engineering. Uh, there's a lot of use of synthetic data for training that is being generated, but there's challenges with regard to how you use some of that information to make decisions, for example, that they're, they're uh, based on those uh, data. Uh, we heard a lot about this, uh, the creation of hallucinations uh, where internal uh, or prejudices regarded uh, or based on the data they are trained on can uh, sort of present a, a totally uh, misaligned perspective of the applications you're building. I mean, in the healthcare sector and in various other sectors we've seen, there's a lot of challenges with regard to that. So the issue of how we're training is a big challenge. And uh, these are elements that need to be looked at. And there's a lot of good work being done in various sectors to try and address some of these challenges, uh, such as the Open AI's work uh, and the Alan Turing Institute, that's working on some of these bias-related problems. Um, the greatest interest for us as educators, as the previous speaker also highlighted, is the challenges associated of the role that AI and AI-based tools are playing and have the potential to create impact in 
the education industry. You know, uh, this is an interesting study that was done, you know, in terms of uh, how do we moderate the use of such technologies? Do we become gatekeepers, as was mentioned in the, by the previous speaker, or do we embrace it? And uh, it, it's a philosophical discussion. You know, in, in many universities, even in uh, ours, for example, acknowledging its existence and allowing students to experiment with it in a, uh, let's say, uh, a, a sort of a gated kind of a way will allow them to embrace such tools and enhance the educational experience. There's a lot of development work that's being done internally at uh, within the institution to actually demonstrate the potential benefits of using such tools and in the education experience. So I think personally, from my point of view, there's a lot of opportunity uh, in terms of uh, embracing some of these technologies for the greater good. Uh, and uh, there are, that is a, a debate we could all have. Uh, the challenges that we face, as was maybe uh, highlighted before, is the issue of equitability, uh, you know, uh, democratization of the technologies and the widening of digital divides. And, and the challenges uh, that we face as developing countries, the tech is advancing faster than uh, many uh, environments can keep up with. There's a lot of cost associated with supporting some of these technologies. And it's natural, as was highlighted by one of the previous speakers, that the innovative and leading edge companies are fully able to adopt the AI technologies and even further double their cash flows. And it, this is one specific study that was uh, conducted to demonstrate that they would have the capacity to double their cash flow between now and uh, 2030. So uh, the challenge we have is that the digital divides uh, brought about by AI uh, in, uh, and the revolutionizing of society creates more divides. And this is an area that governments need to be sensitive and society at large. Uh, the growing divide is also becoming more uh, prevalent as uh, the developed world has uh, better ways of dealing with the implementation of AI-based technologies across society and therefore uh, creating this economic separation between societies uh, that are developed and those that are considered as emerging countries. So from a perspective of the impact that AI potentially has on uh, emerging economies, uh, if there isn't a, a, a focused initiative at, uh, at national level, uh, you have this potential of being left further behind, which is one of the challenges uh, that we all need to be uh, aware of and insightful for. So having said all of that, uh, what is the AI Institute of South Africa? So this is an initiative that uh, originates from the Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial uh, Revolution that was established in the uh, early part of 2020. Uh, the report came out in the, uh, in the 2021 period. And one of the recommendations or one of the objectives of this report was to see how South Africa as a nation can take hold of these emerging digital technologies at global scale. At least that's the intention. One of the recommendations that came out of this report was, to, uh, was the recommendation to establish an AI institute at national level. And some of the mandates that are associated with this establishment is that there must be this... Uh, strong connection between the Institute and uh, government objectives and prerogatives in terms of driving AI adoption in various sectors of, of the state. Uh, the second mandate is that uh, it must contribute to the generation of technology applications in key government sectors. I'll highlight a few of those. And the third mandate is, as we've heard today, uh, one of the challenges we have in most societies is the empowering of our workforce. I mean, uh, as uh, this uh, Prof. Nelva Mandu mentioned, that if you look at the rate at which our youth uh, will become, uh, you know, 42% uh, of our youth will be the major population in the, across the continent, uh, there is this inherent 
uh, sort of responsibility as educators that we are able to include training uh, for the broader society and in different forms. You know, so uh, these are some of the objectives that the institute is fo- trying to focus on in terms of uh, how it is uh, aiming to make this impact from uh, from uh, some of the founding uh, objectives. So uh, in the establishment of this institute, uh, uh, the main driver of this program or this particular uh, uh, sort of initiative is the Department of Communication and Digital Technologies. They were mandated to drive this specific initiative. And uh, there were two uh, founding nodes that were established uh, within this uh, initiative. The first was the University of Johannesburg, which launched their institute uh, towards the end of last year in November. And Swana University was selected as the second node, uh, which we launched in March of this year. So it's a very young institute, uh, still finding its feet to a great extent. Uh, And some of uh, the directions that we have chosen to adopt in uh, uh, answering to some of the objectives uh, from the government side is to see how we can mature uh, our, uh, a lot of the AI-based activities that are taking place within the institution and consolidate that to speak towards uh, some of the national imperatives. So as a university, we looked across the whole university landscape, which is quite large. I mean, as a university, uh, we are a university, for example, that has about 60,000 students uh, spread across quite a large geographical footprint. We operate in uh, a number of provinces across South Africa. Uh, just in the Pretoria region, we have about three campuses in the central part, another three on the outer part. So in terms of our glo- our spread, we're quite large. Uh, so the idea was to see, okay, how could we utilize the spread to draw our, the areas that we feel we have the opportunity to contribute into the AI space. So we selected seven areas that we currently have activities that are taking place. And the idea is to use these as starting points in developing projects that could align to the government uh, prerogatives. And what the government has done is to identify what they refer to as national catalytic projects, which are seen as projects that could speak to uh, government challenges that are uh, that are being faced. So uh, as was mentioned by one of the questions, you know, in terms of how AI can speak to uh, government-based services, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's one need that has basically been identified towards that specific space. Uh, you know, our digital identity, uh, or having a, a single digital identity as one of the objectives of that specific project is an area that has been put forward as a project to focus on. And the University of Johannesburg is currently looking towards that. And there's some initiatives related to that. Uh, another area, we all know that South Africa has a strong motor manufacturing industry and the location of TUTs uh, currently is close to the Rose, uh, Roslyn area where there's a, quite a number of um, auto manufacturing uh, concerns. So the idea is to utilize some of our uh, current research areas to contribute to some of those uh, activities and bring about greater economic uh, development. Uh, so that's the general idea of the Institute. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the areas that we're focusing on, so that's an area, idea of some of the research topics that we're focusing on. So we, uh, as I mentioned, have this interest in building AI for the automotive sector, mainly because of our location and our proximity to the motor manufacturing industry in the Pretoria region. Uh, We have this interest in application of our based technologies in the manufacturing sector. Uh, There's a lot of activity related to AI in healthcare. We can unpack that maybe a bit later if needed. And we have the strong interest uh, in using a lot of our AI-based know-how in the farming and food production, just as an example of some of the areas we're working on. So as I mentioned, the projects that we have now identified linked to government approved catalytic projects. There are quite a few of them. We've selected a a subset of that 
to see where some of our focus areas could contribute to the government uh, selected uh, catalytic projects. Uh, so I've taken, for example, modernizing public services, building AI capacity for public servants, and obviously a clear one is the AI in food, uh, farming and food production, where we have this activity related to the use of AI and for AI-based technologies in that sector. So just uh, as an example uh, of the projects, these are already running projects. Uh, there's one project that's using uh, a lot of technologies to focus on building systems that can do intelligent uh, farming and uh, also utilizing the technologies for precision operations such as uh, spraying and liquid fertilizer utilization and uh, the optimization uh, of uh, the extent of which you spray. Uh, another project that was built uh, on campus by students was the cell phone based intelligent plant diagnosis system uh, that uses a simple smartphone to be able to identify specific plant diseases. And, and this is just to give an idea of some of the projects that are oriented to utilizing uh, AI by uh, skills that, are, uh, that students are trained on to be able to develop them into potential applications in the sector. Uh, and just use that specific one as an example. Um, in the healthcare side, we have a lot of interest and I share some thoughts uh, with Prof. Deshin as well in terms of this uh, augmented approach, which we also support and have the same philosophy of how the technology can come alongside the human uh, to increase the efficiency of the human. So one of the projects that we have a very, uh, quite a lot of activity happening on is again related uh, to the utilization of platforms uh, uh, to detect human emotion. It's again, uh, uh, could be an ethical ish, uh, sort of debate that one could have, but the idea is to use multimodal data, use different uh, uh, geometry of data and the modalities to come up with better and more efficient learning algorithms. Uh, I saw in the chat, somebody spoke about uh, using some of this research for other medical applications. And we have some interest in that area in the cancer detection space as well, which emanates from this particular project as well. The last one I'm just giving an example is in the space of using AI-based technologies in the manufacturing sector. So one of the areas that uh, one of the groups is looking at is to see how uh, AI-based technologies can be utilized for improving efficiencies uh, in the manufacturing sector. And uh, these are two examples of start uh, startups within the TUT space that are utilizing these technologies to bring about better enhancements, primarily focused to the manufacturing sector, uh, and using different uh, strategies. The one uses AI-based technologies, uh, the other one uses a combination of AR, VR, and mixed realities to enhance worker learning and relearning, uh, specifically oriented to the manufacturing sector. So uh, I, I know I'm a bit early, I'm a bit uh, three minutes early. Uh, in conclusion, I think, uh, as society, as we find that businesses and governments are all racing to react to the introduction of AI, I think what's important is, uh, even as institutions, depending on the sectors we work in, is to assess the ways in which AI can be adopted in organizations, how we can uh, prepare ourselves to uh, react to some of the implications it has as an education sector, there's a lot of implications for us. I mean, as was mentioned by the previous speaker, uh, how we train needs to change. That's the reality. And uh, our philosophy is that we need to adopt the technology to empower uh, the students that we're training. And we have, we have taken strongly to that need, you know, that we need to empower them. Uh, organizations need to rethink how they use AI. And even at institutional level, uh, we have a lot of... Uh, 
uh, sort of uh, strategies that are looking at how different sectors of the education space or the education environment can utilize the uh, potential of AI and AI-based technologies to improve some of the services that we offer as a, as a sector. And this is something that a lot of organizations would have to rethink uh, going forward. And uh, with that, I will conclude my presentation. Once again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I do appreciate you hearing me out so late on a Friday. Thank you. <laughs>